In today's episode, we are going to discuss Dogo Argentino bitch fertility, not only in reference to my own experiences as a small breeder, but also in terms of the largest breed-specific study conducted to date exclusively on Dogos. We are going to answer your question regarding when you should expect your bitch to come into our first season, how long the season in each of its stages will last, what physical and behavioral signs may be given, how long her pregnancy will be, what's the likelihood of a normal pregnancy, and normal delivery, and so much more. Don't forget to watch to the end if you're curious about seeing actual photographs of the Dogo Argentino bitches anatomical changes in both pro and estrus. If you're new here, I'm your host, Nicole. Welcome to Dogo Argentino USA, the channel where we talk Dogo. I started this channel with the dual purpose of education meant to enrich your relationship with your Dogo Argentino dog and passionate admiration of this extraordinary athletic and intelligent hunting breed. If you feel we earn it, we hope you'll consider subscribing to join our community. Don't forget to hit that bell icon so you're notified every time we release a new video. Let's start out with some background in case you're unfamiliar with veterinary terminology so you'll know exactly what we're talking about. First and foremost, let's discuss your Dogo Argentino bitch's reproductive cycle. This cycle has four stages, pro-esterous, esterous, met-esterous, and finally an esterous. These stages coincide with hormonal changes that cause physical changes in the bitch's body and her behavior. Pro-esterous, also known as the first stage of a bitch's fertile season, is when your bitch's reproductive system readies for the release of eggs. Owners may notice the swelling of the Dogo Argentino bitch's vulva along with discharge. The discharge may start out watery and pink tinted and may progress to deep red. Males will follow her and attempt to smell or lick her and mount her. In most cases, she will not accept male advances during the stage and she will fiercely rebuke any who try. Proesterous is characterized as the period during which follicle enlargement occurs estrogen increases, vascularity of the female reproductive tract increases, endometrial glands begin to grow, estrogen levels peak, estradiol increases and peaks at the end, and also bloody discharge begins. After proesterous, a bitch enters estrus or the receptive stage of her fertile cycle when her vulva has fully expanded to accept mating. She will move her tail to the side, also known as flagging, to expose her vulva. The Dogo Argentino bitch will flirt with a male by inciting play, sniffing his genitalia, and walking in front of the male's nose to present her genitalia to him. Generally, a bitch will easily accept a male's advances and allow him to mate with her. This coincides with the release of the bitch's eggs. Estrus is characterized by allowing the male to mount, estrogen decreases, Luteinizing hormone surge occurs. Ovulation will occur between 24 and 48 hours after the surge of luteinizing hormone. Uterine motility is high with contractions moving towards the oviduct. Sperm transport is optimal. Cervical mucus volume increases. Estradiol declines. Luteinizing hormone surges. Ovulation and progesterone increase even before ovulation. The next stage is metesterous. If the female wasn't successfully bred, she may enter pseudopregnancy with the exact same signs and symptoms as true pregnancy, which include teat enlargement, increased appetite, weight gain, abdominal swelling, lactation, nesting, and even contractions. Metesterous is divided into two stages. During metesterous one, estrogen is low, the corpus hemorrhagicum is present, the uterus will have contractions subside, endometrial glands continue to grow and become coiled, follicular stimulating hormone increases triggering the growth of follicles, metesterous 1 will have high progesterone and an increase in estradiol, metesterous 2 we will have a decline in progesterone, estradiol declines Prolactin increases and then declines. The pattern, as I mentioned, is the same in pregnant and non-pregnant bitches. Pseudopregnancy, aka false pregnancy, occurs in non-pregnant bitches because of the increase in prolactin. 
also during metesterous two, which is also called diesterous, progesterone is high, follicular stimulating hormone is low, but increases at some point to cause the growth of pre-ovulatory follicles. The uterus will secrete fluid, but the volume of the fluid decreases over time. Contractions stop. The corpus luteum regresses at the end of this period if the female is not pregnant. Diestrus ends when a pregnant bitch whelps or gives birth, or when a pseudopregnant bitch has a progesterone concentration that drops below 1 nanogram parts per million. Finally, we have anestrus or the rest stage. This part of her reproductive cycle is affected both by hormonal change and exposure to light. Anestrus has a follicle-stimulating hormone increase that triggers the follicular growth. Now that you know about the reproductive cycle, let's examine some very important milestones. According to a dedicated Dogo Argentino study published in the Journal of Veterinary Medicine, we will examine the reproductive parameters of the Dogo Argentino bitch. The Dogo Argentino bitch is the first and only breed recognized by the FCI as originating from the country of Argentina. What's interesting about this particular study is that it is dedicated to the Dogo Argentino specifically. This particular study focused exclusively on surveying breeders from the Cordova region of Argentina. It was not conducted in a lab and is a survey-based study. Therefore, there is an opportunity for error since the study was not conducted in a lab. That error can be minor or major based on whether the breeders that were surveyed kept accurate records or had incomplete or false answers. I am not saying that the margin for error is large, but it is present. One of the main questions the study sought to answer was to find out whether the reproductive cycle of the Dogo Argentino bitch was similar or dissimilar to other large breeds. 187 surveys were sent out and 149 surveys were completed for a rate of about 80% completion. These records were obtained from 65 different breeders in the Cordova province of Argentina during the years of 2010 and 2011. All the Dogo Argentino bitches were registered with FCI as purebred. They were all intact, and they ranged in age from 1 to 14 years with an average of 4.8 years. If you are curious about when your Dogo Argentino bitch will go into her first season, it seems the average is 8.93 months. This reflects my own experience with Emma. She entered her heat at 8.5. The average evaluated Dogo Argentino bitch had their heat cycle regularly every six months. This coincides with my own cycle with my bitches, who seem to enter their heat every six months. Volvo bleeding, which is a characteristic of proesterous, had a duration of 6 to 11 days with 9 days on average, and this is consistent in my own females with 9 days being typical. Similar to other large breeds, vulval bleeding is quite common, swelling very common, and bleeding during mating about 1 in 3. Flagging was shown at 95%, and receptivity was about 85% and about one in three were receptive to mounting even while they were still bleeding, so it is important to remember that discharge could be continuing from proesterous into estrus. Out of this study, 133 of the bitches had at least one mating with a whelping rate of 84%. This value agrees with the 80 to 95% whelping rate shown in most canines of similar size. On average, dog pregnancy is between 52 and 72 days from the time a first mating occurs, which is why it is so important that you are observant if you are trying to determine the likelihood of when your bitch will whelp or give birth. The average is 60 days for me. If you don't know the time of the first mating, it's difficult to know when the litter is due. Also, it is very helpful to know that first mating day because at day 55, you can take your Dogo Argentino bitch to be x-rayed because the skulls of her pups are solid enough to determine how many she's carrying. 
I strongly suggest having your bitch x-rayed because if she does not give birth to all the puppies in her womb and a puppy for whatever reason remains inside, it will eventually decompose and will kill the female. But you wouldn't know that if you didn't know how many puppies she was carrying. And you would want to count the placentas for similar reasons. In my own females, the average gestational duration has been 60 days on the dot. This is just slightly less than the 61.12 days, which was average out of the 295 full-term pregnancies in the study. Out of the pregnancies, of which there was 299 in total, 90% were completely normal. This also reflects my experience. Stated differently, 9 out of 10 pregnancies will go smoothly, but in the 10% that don't, you may need an emergency cesarean due to obstructed birth. I've experienced dystocia about 6.69%, also called stuck puppy syndrome, which is terrifying, so make sure you are prepared. This rate is higher than average in similarly sized canines, where dystocia is only about 5%. In my particular case, the stuck puppy died of lack of oxygen. And unfortunately, due to a health concern, it happened to be a litter that I was on my own for delivery. So you do need to be prepared for stuck puppy syndrome, and it's something you might want to discuss with your veterinarian. Thankfully, the rate of emergency cesarean section is low, at about 2.68%. Emergency surgery in my area runs about $4,500, it is important that you know the cost and availability of emergency vet care in your area. You don't want to have a problem without knowing who to call. Approximately 1.34% of pregnancies were either aborted or reabsorbed. You may know the larger the breed, the larger the litter size. For example, if you breed a French Bulldog, you're going to have a much smaller litter than if you breed a Dogo Argentino. The average litter size for dogs of a similar size that are not dogos is about 6.7. Yet the average litter size in this particular study was 8.2 pups, but in my own bitches, the average litter size is closer to 10. The average female to male split in litters is 50-50 according to this study, and that has also been my experience though surely not every litter is going to be equally split in that way. Having a good background in the parameters of reproductive fertility in the Dogo Argentino is essential knowledge in order to achieve proper reproductive management and also to determine the ideal time of mating or artificial insemination, also to avoid unwanted pregnancies, to estimate whelping date, and to diagnose various pathologies. While domestic dogs are monoesterous and typically non-seasonal breeders, there are large individual variations. Of the many types of births a Dogo Argentino might have, as the study shows, about 90% is normal, about 2.68% result in C-section, about 1.34% result in abortion or reabsorption, and about 6.69% will result in dystocia or stuck puppy syndrome. And stuck puppy syndrome is where the uterus and the birth canal are completely normal, having normal contractions, but the puppy gets stuck anyway and will normally die from lack of oxygen. Now, in terms of maternal ability, the Dogo Argentino is generally quite good. About 85% will show normal maternal ability. Approximately 8% will show bad maternal ability, and approximately 7% will show regular maternal ability. So what's bad maternal ability? That means that the mother is not taking care of her pups. She might refuse to feed them, refuse to lay against them for heat regulation. She might actually consume them. She might uh, simply not groom them appropriately because when puppies are born, they cannot eliminate on their own and they require the bitch to stimulate their genitalia by licking so that they will excrete uh, waste. 
And if the mother doesn't do that, that means you have to do it. So it's not an exciting thing. Uh, but most, thankfully, most Dogo Argentinas are actually very good mothers, better than average. And so that has also been my personal experience. Um, my older bitch is a phenomenal mother. She's very, very good. And that makes it easier on you. And it means the survival rate of your puppies is going to be much higher than if it's merely regular maternal ability or bad maternal ability. I want you to know that we are a super small channel. And the only way that a small channel can survive is through your like, your comment, your share, and your subscription. Because these things activate the algorithm of YouTube and share our channel further to interested parties. And at this point, we are such a teeny tiny channel that it would be really helpful if you were to help us out if you felt like we are worthy. And we appreciate that. Now, as always, studies like this that are survey-based are incredibly rare. And this particular study was written by Marina Caffarati. And she really did a great job studying specifically Dogo Argentinos because even though the breed standard allows us to know morphologically what the Dogo is supposed to look like, knowing part of what the Dogo is going to act like as a mother and as a reproductive partner in a breeder's kennel is very, very helpful. And so I really commend her. This was a wonderful study. It's not the most modern study because like I said, it was written in 2010, 2011, but still very helpful because breed specific studies are actually fairly uncommon in rare breeds because they're very, very expensive to produce. Given that this was published in the American Journal of Veterinary Medicine, that is a huge thing for our breed. And I hope that I think mainly the big takeaway is that your bitch is going to be normal comparative to other dogs of similar size, if not slightly better in most regards. And I think that this is partially because the Dogo Argentino has such fantastic structure because structure is heavily related to pregnancy. And that's why dogs, when they start to compromise the structure morphologically, they also compromise the reproductive capability. Uh, take, for example, the modern English bulldog. Quite frequently, the modern English bulldog has difficulty in natural mating to the point where it's actually fairly standard to use artificial insemination because the dogs morphologically simply can't mate naturally anymore. And this is not the not to pick on bulldogs. I love bulldogs, but it's just a good example of a dog whose form has overtaken its function and therefore has uh, reproductive problems because of it. And thankfully, uh, we don't have that. And that's one of the reasons that I do think maintaining a breed standard is important because you don't want to breed the function at the expense of the look or the form of the dog. So let me know what you think about your bitch's fertility in the comments in terms of when she first came into heat. Like I said, my bitch came into heat on time, my littlest girl, at eight and a half months. Did you find that to be true for your bitch? Let me know. I'm really curious. And as always, I hope that I have managed to educate you to enrich your relationship with your Dogo Argentino, or at the very least, allowed you passionate admiration of this extraordinary breed. Thank you so much. Have a Dogo-tastic day.